There comes a time when you just need to smile and put your good face on and forgive people and go on in life. You say, well, Pastor, I just can't get over it. Well, you know what you need to do? Then you need to forgive by faith. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. They say the message of Christ is old and they ask that we preach something new. The story of the babe and the man on the cross for the wise of this world will not do. But it can never grow old, it can never grow old, though a million times over the story is told. While sin lives unvanquished and death rules the world, the story of Jesus can never grow old. But the story is old, like the sunlight is old, but it's new every morn all the same. While it floods all the world with its gladness and light and kindles faraway stars with its flames. The story of Jesus can never grow old. It can never grow old, though it's told a million times or. The message of Jesus can never grow old. We come today, and when it comes to Christmas, we know that story. We've heard it from a child, but it's still fresh. It's as fresh as the first time that we've ever heard it. Merry Christmas. But Merry Christmas comes with a price. If you're going to have a great Christmas, there are some rules you have to follow. Today I want to share with you the Ten Commandments to have a Merry Christmas. Commandment number one, Merry Christmas means an act of love on your part. We don't say Happy Christmas, we say Happy Easter. Happiness is a contentment. You can sit around a warm fire doing nothing and be happy because you're content. But if you come in and you say, we had a merry old time last night. Boy, you went out and had dinner. You went out and had a party. You, and, you went out and did something because being merry denotes some kind of action that brought great joy. Well, when it comes to Christmas time, we are to have a Merry Christmas because we're to do something. We're to do something to bless people. We're to, to bring uh, kindness to people in need. We're to help the poor. We're to reach out to those that are hurting. And there's always someone that's in worse shape than you, and we're to help them. And if you're going to have a Merry Christmas, you've got to reach out and do something to other people. The second commandment, is to pray, is to pray and obey. Say that with me, pray and obey. It's not just saying a prayer, but it's, it's in listening to what God has to say to you. In the Bible, in the book of Acts, it tells about Philip. And Philip was, was praying, and while he was praying, an angel came to him. He said, I want you to go to the south, down by Gaza. And there you're going to meet a man, and that man is uh, you have a message for him. So he got up and he went to the south, and as he did, there came by an Ethiopian eunuch. He was in his carriage, and uh, he was reading. He was reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes were healed. And Philip went over to him and said, do you understand what you're reading? He said, no, I don't even have a clue. He said, well, let me share with you. And he talked about Christ, how Christ came as the Son of God and he was crucified and he brought healing and deliverance. He not only prayed, but he obeyed. Years ago, I was on a, on a fast. And as I was uh, fasting at 3.33, this angel came to me. He woke me up, and, and uh, as I went into the other room, he said, I want you to send a gift to Indonesia. At that time, there had been a, a great tsunami, and it had hit Sri Lanka, it had hit India and Indonesia. 
And our church came together and we raised money. And there were about 30 people who went to India and Sri Lanka. But I didn't know anyone in Indonesia. And this angel said, send a gift to Indonesia. I remember as I, as I told this angel, I, I don't know anybody in Indonesia. I looked and there was a catalog there on the shelf. I reached and got it and I opened it. And it had a picture of a man by the name of Jacob Nahaway. He pastored a church in Jakarta, Indonesia. He gave all the information. I called him. It was 12 hours difference. And so it was four in the afternoon. And I told him what God had told me to do. And he started crying. He said, I've been on my knees praying that God would send the money. We're trying to help so many people. And so we came back and we took another offering. And $25,000 came in. And we sent that to Indonesia. It's not just to pray. It's you pray and you obey. Which brings us to the third commandment. And that is that this Christmas, give a blessing to every member of your family. You know, it's one thing to give a present, but it's another thing to give a blessing. And the Bible says, whatsoever we bless on earth is blessed in heaven. And whatsoever we curse on earth is cursed in heaven. So give a spiritual blessing. They may never remember what they got physically. They may not remember the scar for what you bought them. But when you give them a blessing, I've got a promise for you this year. I want to give it to you. They'll never forget it. There was a lady in our church, and I was her pastor for about 25 years. And all that time, this lady had cancer. They thought she was going to die a dozen times, and she always came back full of joy. When you looked at her, you wouldn't think a thing was wrong with her. So one day they called me to go to the hospital. And I got up to the hospital, and her family was there, and she was sitting there on the phone. She looked like she was the picture of health, looks like she never needed to be in the hospital. And she was talking to her grandson. He was down in Texas, and she was really preaching to him. I, I want to read you this proverb, she said. And it talked about stay away from bad women. I don't know why she was telling that grandson that, but uh, evidently he needed it. And she said, are you praying? Are you reading your Bible? No, I don't think so. And I want you to begin to read your Bible every day. And she's just telling him this. And she had called every one of her children, every one of her grandchildren. She'd given them a promise. She was praying. And so her husband and I, we went down to get something to eat. And when we came back, she had passed. It was like she fulfilled what God had called her to do, and then she went to heaven. I want to encourage you to give spiritual blessings along with your other gifts. The fourth commandment is start uh, your Christmas by reading the Bible. You know, a Christmas is about Jesus. Amen. I don't remember a Christmas I've had <clears throat> in my life when my parents were alive and I was growing up to when Margaret and I started our own tradition of Christmas that we haven't started by reading the Christmas story. The two books that the Christmas story is in is in the book of Matthew and in Luke, the second chapter. But I encourage you to read the Bible before you begin the exchange of gifts it just sets the tone to what Christmas really is all about. The fifth commandment is, thou shall not have an argument on Christmas Day. You know, sometimes the worst arguments happen right at Christmas. Everybody's under a lot of pressure. There's a lot of stress. But instead of having a knockdown drag out, just shut your mouth and keep quiet. Yes, dear. Anything you say is the right answer. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. And we have the power through the words we speak to either bring peace or to cause trouble. The next commandment is, <clears throat> ladies, if you don't know what to get your husband or your, your, uh, uh, your son for Christmas, buy him a pair of underwear and some socks Men always need underwear, and they need clean socks. And all the men said, 
Amen. The eighth commandment is this. Seventh commandment is by faith, forgive everybody. What is so disappointing in life is how people have unforgiveness towards members of their own family. And usually it starts over nothing. It starts over little things that you can't even remember what it was all about. But it's time to grow up, put your big boy pants on, and forgive people. That's what Christians do. I was asked to do a funeral. And as I went down to do the funeral, a part of the family said they weren't coming to the funeral if a certain preacher was going to come and assist in the funeral. The family had asked this preacher to join them, and then another part of the family, they were angry at that preacher, and so they asked me to go do the dirty work. And I remember I called that other pastor, and I said, look, I, I apologize, but uh, part of the family don't want you to come, and they're not going to come if you do come, and I think it would be better if you graciously backed out, and he did. But that's no place for that. There comes a time when you just need to smile and put your good face on and forgive people and go on in life. You say, well, pastor, I just can't get over it. Well, you know what you need to do? Then you need to forgive by faith. You need to just go along and pretty soon as you begin to do that, God takes all the hurt and the pain out and you forget what you were even angry about. And so walk in love and forget, forgive your enemies. Which comes to the eighth commandment, and it's this. Turn Christmas music on in your house. Listen, there's something about Christmas carols. A joy to the world, silent night, that bring a healing and bring peace and bring joy. Some of you are gloomy and you got frowns on your face, at least one time a year, turn the smile on. And what helps do that is Christmas music. If you don't have any Christmas music, turn it on WJIE radio. It's got all Christian Christmas music on uh, this time of year. The ninth commandment is this. Proclaim by faith what you're believing God to do in 2020. The Bible says, I am the Lord thy God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. You see, Christmas is a time that people come together. Uh, you say, well, I'm going to save that for the new year. Well, your family may not be there in the new year. You may not uh, have a, a family time. But by simply saying, you know, this coming year, I'm believing that God is going to bless our family greater than we've ever been blessed before. God's going to enable us to open a new business. God's going to give a scholarship to, to our son. And as you just begin to speak by faith what you're trusting God to do, you impart something to your family, something that money can't buy. It's the prophetic word of God within you as the head of your home that will release the blessing of God. Now we come to the 10th commandment. And if you can't remember any of the nine that I just shared with you, if you'll remember this one, you'll remember something good enough. And that is Christmas is all about love. It's not just about presents and gifts and the family. It's about loving one another and peace on earth and goodwill towards mankind. There was a school teacher, her name was Miss Ballard. She was her first year as teaching. And we know uh, teachers are not supposed to have favorites and they all get up and say, well, I have no favorites in their line because they always have a teacher's pet. How many know that to be true? And it's all right to have a teacher's pet, but one thing for sure you can't have as a teacher is someone you don't like. And Miss Ballard, she had a, a student that she didn't like. The fact is, to make an example out of him, she had moved Teddy right to the front of the room. Teddy wasn't dressed as nice as the other students. 
Sometimes he came and he, his hair wasn't combed and he wasn't clean. He was messy in his appearance. He never seemed to get his homework in on time. And sometimes he went to sleep in class and she just didn't like him. The fact is, when it came to grading his papers, she seemed to take great joy in marking the wrong answers with big X's, big red X's on his paper, and then to circle the F that he got in bigger in a bigger uh, circle. And it was something that she, uh, she just did not like this boy. And now it's getting close to Christmas, and she decides she's going to fail Teddy. He just hasn't lived up to the mark, and somebody's got to do it, and, and I'm the one to do it. And so she got his records out, and as she began to go through his records, she began to see the different uh, remarks of the teachers, the first grade teacher. She wrote, he's a bright child. He seems like he's always happy, he does neat work. The second grade teacher says he sure gets along with the other students. Says uh, he's been quite worried though because his mother has terminal cancer. The third grade teacher, she wrote, said uh, since his mother's death, it's been hard on Teddy. And it seems like his father doesn't help him at home, and he needs some help. The fourth grade teacher said, uh, Teddy is withdrawn. He doesn't have interest in studying, and uh, he sleeps a lot. And she looked at that, and she said, see there, those teachers didn't have the guts to fail him. And so now I have to do the work that they should have done, and I'm very capable of doing it. I'm going to fail him. And so it came to the last day of the Christmas break, and you know how schools are, they have a Christmas party, and kids uh, came there, and there were cupcakes, and then some of the children brought gifts to give to the teacher, and they were wrapped nicely, and she was unwrapping all of them and going through the gifts, and she came to the last gift, and it was in a paper sack. It was scribbled on with crayon, and it was from Teddy. So she opened the sack, and she was trying to act all excited, and she reached in, and there was a half-used bottle of cheap perfume. Well, she made over, and she took the perfume, and she put it on herself, and some of the little girls, they dabbed it upon themselves, and they all giggled, and then she reached in, and the second gift was a cheap, inexpensive bracelet. It had rhinestones on it, and several of the rhinestones were missing. But she put it on her, her arm, and she jiggled her arm, and she acted like she was so thrilled. And then the bell rang, and they were off for Christmas break. Well, all the children left except Teddy. And finally, Teddy walked up to the desk and said, Miss Ballard, I'm so glad you liked the perfume and the bracelet said, you smell just like my mama. That was her perfume, and that was her favorite bracelet. And you remind me so much of my mother. I wanted you to have them, and he left. Well, that was more than she ever expected, and Miss Ballard sat down, and she cried, and she cried, and she cried. She said, I, I don't know how long I cried, but I began to pray, and I asked God to forgive me. Forgive me of not being sensitive to the needs of this little boy. And over the Christmas break, she came up with a plan. And her plan was to help Teddy pass the fifth grade. When school started again, she told Teddy, she said, Teddy, you're behind, and I'm going to help you to pass. And so after school, we're going to stay, and I'm going to help you, and you're going to catch up. And that's what happened. She volunteered her time. She would work with Teddy. He began to improve on his reading. He got, he got a grip on math, and he passed the fifth grade. Well, she looked back on those days, and she thought that was, that was the brightest time of my teaching career. And she took that perfume, and she took that bracelet, and she put it in a little box to save it. And then six years passed. She got a letter, 
uh, dear Miss Ballard, uh, this is Teddy. And I want to thank you for your help. You're the greatest teacher I ever had. And without your help, I don't think I would have ever graduated from high school. But I graduated at the top of the class and received a scholarship to go to college. Thank you so much. And signed it, Teddy. Oh, this thrilled her. She took that letter and she put it in the box along with that perfume and bracelet. And then four years passed. She got another letter. Dear Miss, dear, dear Miss Ballard, today I graduated from college. I was summa cum laude. I look back and I think without your help, I would have never made it through the fifth grade and I wouldn't be where I am today. Thank you so much. And signed it, Teddy. Well, she placed that with the other letter and then four more years passed and she got another letter. Dear Miss Ballard, today I've graduated from medical school. It's been a long journey, but without your help, it never would have been possible. You're the best teacher anyone could ever have. And by the way, I'm getting married. I met the most beautiful young lady. And since uh, my mother is not living, would you come and sit in the place of the mother of the groom? Well, she wrote back. And she said, I'll be glad to be there. And she showed up at the wedding and she wore on her arm a cheap rhinestone bracelet that he had given. She wore the perfume that she had kept all those years. And uh, at the conclusion of the wedding, Teddy said, Miss Ballard, this is the greatest thing for you to come. You're the greatest teacher. And she said, oh, no, I owe you because you taught me what it meant to be a real teacher and not just teach the ABCs and reading and writing and arithmetic, but to teach the child. And that's what I've tried to do. Christmas is about the love of God. And God so loved the world that he gave. And now it comes to the time where we become Jesus' personal representative. When you leave and when you stand and you say, I'm a Christian, you're saying, I'm a representative of Jesus Christ. I'm a representative of the Father who gave his only Son. Today, I want everyone to stand and I want you to join hands with people on either side of you. And I want you to pray this prayer with me out loud. So Lord Jesus, you have a plan for my life and I want to follow that plan. I bless those on either side of me. And in the name of Jesus, I command every curse, every hex, every evil thing that's ever been spoken over you to be broken. We cast it to the ground. We trample upon it. I speak to hurts and bruises in your life. May they be healed. I speak to you on the right of me. May God fulfill his call in your life. May you have peace in your family. May every need be met for the glory of God. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Now I want you to take your hand and place it on that part of your body where you need God to touch you. It may be in your back or your knees or your joints. You may have cancer. If you can't touch that part of your body, just place your hand on your heart. But today I speak the healing power of Jesus. I command weaknesses and pain and sickness to come out in the name of Jesus. I declare you'll not die with cancer. You'll live to be a good old age. May your heart be healed. I curse diabetes. I curse every sickness in the name of Jesus off of you. I speak healing to your knees and your, your joints and to your back be healed. Now I want you to say with me, say in the name of Jesus. I shall live to be a good old age. My body is, is healed by the power of God. I'll not have cancer, nor diabetes, nor heart disease. Every generational weakness is broken off of my household in the name of Jesus. 
Now raise your right hand. I speak the prosperity of God upon you. May God give you favor. May everything you touch be blessed of God. May this be the blessed, best year and most blessed year that you've ever had. May God meet every financial need in the name of Jesus. May your dreams and hopes, may they be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And may God give you peace and goodwill wherever you go for the glory of the Lord. Now lay your hand on your forehead. Pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, open my eyes to see what you have for me. Open my ears to hear. May every decision I make be the right decision. Lord, in Jesus' name, I want to serve you all the days of my life. Now with every head bowed, every eye closed, maybe you're here and say, Pastor, I'm not right with God. I've come here on this Sunday to honor the Lord, but I'm not right in my own heart, and I want to make things right with God. Can I see your hand? Just slip your hand up. I want to pray for you right there. Yes. Yes. Are there others? Slip your hand up. God bless you. God bless you today. I want us all to pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, as best I know how, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Take out of me jealousy, unforgiveness, hurt feelings that have never gotten healed, and put inside of me the love of Christ, the love of Jesus. Help me to bless everybody. I'll not be a racist. I'll not be unforgiving. I'll not be a despiteful person. But I'm filled with your kindness and your goodness to share with all mankind. In Jesus' name. in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name.